Now that we've gotten comfortable with sequences, we're ready to take a look at what are called series. The question we're going to answer today is, what are series? And series are related to sequence. What a series is going to do is find the sum of the numbers in a sequence. Basically, we're going to have a sequence of numbers, and we're going to add them all up. And this is something we're going to be very interested in when we get to calculus, is we're going to add up an infinite number of numbers and see what they add up to. So just kind of as a preview of calculus, we're going to add maybe 1 plus 1 half, plus 1 third, plus 1 fourth, and add those up forever, versus if I add maybe 1 plus a half, plus a fourth, plus an eighth, plus a sixteenth, and add those up forever. And what's interesting to us in calculus as we add these sequences together, the first sequence where we're adding with 2, 3, 4, 5 in the denominator, that actually is going to add up to infinity. While the bottom sequence, we're having powers of 2 in the denominator, 1 half, 1 fourth, 1 eighth, 1 sixteenth, that's going to actually add up to the number 2. And so sometimes a series of numbers will add up to infinity, and sometimes a series of numbers will add up to a specific number. And that's what you're going to be interested in when you get to calculus. For our purposes, we're not going to add up an infinite number of numbers. We're just going to look at how we can add up a series of a finite number of elements. So to set this up, I'm going to talk about what is called sigma notation. And a sigma notation, you'll see looking something like this. We'll have the Greek letter sigma, which I draw very poorly. It's a capital letter sigma. Beneath it, you'll see something like k equals 1. Above it, you'll see a number, maybe like the number 5. And then you'll see an expression afterwards, maybe 2k minus 1. What the pieces here mean is this Greek letter sigma, that funky character, that means add up. The k equals, that is the variable in the problem. And you'll notice that that variable did show up to k minus 1. The bottom value that k equals is what k is going to start at. And the top number tells us what k is going to end at. And so basically what this means is we're going to start with k equals 1, because that's the starting number. And then I get 2 times 1 minus 1, which is 1. And then k is going to start to count up. k equals 2 will give me 2 times 2 minus 1, which is 3. And it's going to keep counting up. k equals 3. The expression then is 2 times 3 minus 1, which gives me 5. Then k equals 4 would be 2 times 4 minus 1 which is 7. And k equals 5 would be 2 times 5 minus 1, which is 9. I'm going to stop there because I got up to k equals 5, which is the top number of the sigma. That's my ending value. And so if I want to calculate the sum as k goes from 1 to 5 of 2k minus 1, that means we're going to add the sequence of numbers that we just found. 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 9 equals 25. That's what sigma notation has us do. It has us add up the elements of a sequence by giving us the formula for the sequence. Let's try one more example. Let's find the sum as n goes from 2 to 4 of negative 1 to the n power, 
times 2 to the n plus 1 over n factorial. Well, we can see that n is going to start at 2 and count up to 4. So if n equals 2, we have negative 1 squared times 2 to the 2 plus 1 over 2 factorial. When I simplify that, the negative 1 squared is a positive 1. Then we have 2 to the third power, which is 8, divided by 2 factorial, which is 2. So that's going to simplify to 4. Then n counts up. So now n is going to be equal to 3. Negative 1 to the third power times 2 to the 3 plus 1 over 3 factorial. Now when the negative 1 is cubed, that's going to give me a negative. 2 to the fourth power is 16 over 3 factorial means 3 times 2, which is 6. And that's going to simplify to negative 8 thirds. Continuing to count up, where n is now equal to 4, we have negative 1 to the fourth power times 2 to the 4 plus 1 over 4 factorial. Simplifying this, negative 1 to the fourth is going to be a positive 1. 2 to the fifth is 32. Divided by 4 factorial is 4 times 3, which is 12, times 2, which is 24. And dividing both by 8, we end up with 4 thirds. And so finally, to finish this off, the sum as n goes from 2 to 4 of negative 1 to the n of 2 to the n plus 1 over n factorial would be the sum of those terms. 4 plus a negative 8 thirds plus 4 thirds. And I might get a common denominator on the 4. 4 with a common denominator would be 12 thirds. And so we have 12 minus 8 plus 4 is equal to 8 thirds is the sum of this series. A series is adding the numbers of a sequence. Well, that's pretty straightforward. The more challenging bit is not so much evaluating a series. The more challenging bit is taking a series and writing it in this sigma notation. So let's take a look at some examples where we do just that, where we write a series in sigma notation. Let's start with this series. Let's take 7. I'll go ahead and put it over 1. Minus 7 halves plus 7 sixths minus 7 24ths plus 7 over 20 minus and so on and so on and so on. Actually, let's not do and so on. Let's stop there. What I notice is the numerator is pretty easy to predict. The numerator is always 7. Looking at the denominator, we've got 1, 2, 6, 24. Oops, and 120. I wrote that wrong. Let's make that 120. And as I look how I move from 1 to 2, there's two options to get there. I can either add 1 or I can multiply by 2. Looking for a pattern going from 2 to 6, we're either adding 4 or multiplying by 3. Going from 6 to 24, we're either adding 18 or multiplying by 4. Going from 24 to 120, we're either adding 96, or we're multiplying by 5. And you can see that adding really has no pattern to it. But the multiplying step does have a pattern to it. Times 2, times 3, times 4. That's a factorial. So I might see if n factorial works. And let's call the first term n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3, n equals 4, and n equals 5. 
if we're doing n factorial, notice 1 factorial is 1, 2 factorial is 2. On the third term, 3 factorial is 6. On the fourth term, 4 factorial is 24. And on the fifth term, 5 factorial is 120. So I'm feeling pretty good about that denominator. The other thing I have to watch out for is the signs, though. Notice the signs go positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. When we have alternating signs, the way we can get that is we can take negative 1 raised to some exponent. Sometimes the exponent is n, and sometimes the exponent is n minus 1. Notice when we say the first term n equals 1, the first term is positive. Well, negative 1 raised to the first power is negative 1. That's negative. So rather than doing raised to the n, we'll do raised to the n plus 1. By making it n plus 1, now on the first term, 1 plus 1 is 2, and negative 1 squared is a positive 1. And that's going to give us the positive that we need. So we've got three parts. We've got our numerator, our denominator, and the negative, the alternating signs. If we put this all together, we're going to a sum as n goes from the first value was 1, the last value was 5. We said the numerator was 7. We said the denominator was n factorial. But then we also need the alternating sign, which comes from negative 1 to the n plus 1. Putting together all the pieces, we've taken this series and we've rewritten it in sigma notation. Let's try one more example before I let you go to practice some on your own. Let's take the series negative 4 thirds plus 6 ninths minus 8 over 27 plus 10 over 81 minus 12 over 243 plus 14 over 729. And just to number the terms, we'll call them n equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So we've got numbered terms. Since there's fractions, we'll look at the numerator first. The numerator is going 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. And you can probably see what's happening is we're adding 2 each time to get my new numerator. So I might try 2n. The problem is when n equals, we can pick any one. Let's look at n equals 2. When n equals 2, we want the answer to be 6. We have 2 times 2, which is 4. So to get it to be 6, we're going to add an extra 2 to it, 2n plus 2. Is that going to be better? Well, let's try it. Let's let n equals 3. Is that going to give us the 8 we expect? 2 times 3 plus 2. 6 plus 2 does equal 8, just like we'd expect for the third term. So I feel pretty good. The numerator is 2n plus 2. For the denominator, we have 3, 9, 27, 81, 243, 729. And looking at that, you might see, to go from one term to the next, we seem to be multiplying by 3. So repeated multiplication becomes 3 to some exponent. Let's try that. Let's try that on n equals 3. Will that give me the third term? The third denominator is 27. 3 to the third is 27. That does work, so I'm feeling 
pretty good, about 3 to the n for the denominator. This one also has alternating signs, though. Negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. The way we handle the alternating sign is we take negative 1 raised to an exponent. We've been picking on n equals 3, so let's keep that up. When n equals 3, we have negative 1 to the third. That is negative 1. Is the third term negative? Yes, it is. So we've got the correct negative 1 to the n. Now we can put it all together to write our sigma notation. We start with the first term. We're going to go all the way up to the sixth term. The numerator we said was 2n plus 2. The denominator we said was 3 to the n. And let's put the 2n plus 2 in parentheses, because we also need a negative 1 raised to the n to get the signs. And now we've developed sigma notation for our series. Now it's your turn to practice some of these. Practice evaluating some series by working out all the term numbers from maybe 1 to 6 in this example. And also work the other way, going from the series written out, can you write it in sigma notation? Practice some of these and let me know if you have any questions.